you all remember me highlighting her. We talked a little bit about her life, which is phenomenal. So much has been written about her. Many of you may know her as the civil rights activist, marched, worked with very closely Dr. King and so many others. She is the author of a book. I mean, we're showing you stuff because we think you're live on Facebook right now, but you'll be able to catch it later. And her book is I've Been Marching All the Time. Now, she is going to call in to the show today. One of the things I love about her is that she was one of the first African-American women to host her own television show. She later became a corporate executive for the Turner Broadcasting Network. So I'm just letting you know that when that phone rings, we will immediately switch over to her. And that being said, my co-host is here and she's ready to go. It's National Women's History Month. And so kudos to you. Thank you very much. And kudos to you for starting this awesome radio program. Yeah. Where we get to <laughs> highlight not just women, but all of the phenomenal people who are doing things um, in our community, in, in this world, actually. One of the things I also like about In Touch News, kudos to Daryl and Tampa Bay, Tammy Johnson. Yes. They get what it is that we're trying to do and partner with us in order to be able to bring awareness about very, very important issues affecting, impacting our community. Overall and with the right energy. So, yes. Yeah. So with um, it being Women's History Month, I have to say that when you talk to me about um, Dr. Carter, that in everything that she's done. Oh, that's, that's Dr. Clayton. Dr. We did Clayton, have on Dr. Sorry. Carter, too. And um, everything that she's done in civil rights, I actually yes. learned something. Oh. I actually learned something. But from a health standpoint, it's also colorectal cancer awareness yes. month and also nutrition awareness month. And it's important that we adhere to our um, screening standards and health standards where we can. Um, sometimes there are barriers, and we'll get to that in um, a bit. But it's important that we at least go get checked out because you can't act upon things if you don't know that they're there. So um, are we go ready to go get, on? Go get checked out. Go get we checked were, we out. We were trying to give... Dr. Clayton a couple of minutes to prepare because once Dr. Davis starts sharing with you the importance of colon cancer, the importance and the role people that nutrition plays in our health, in our bodies, because we want to be like Dr. Clayton. Yes, y'all. She's do. 88 years young. Exactly. And that's why I went on and brought this up just okay. a little bit early because you told me what time she was going to call in. And because she was um, so mature and just still kicking it and making strides, yeah. there's a reason for all of that. And I do want to throw in one or two questions about health. We will have that opportunity. And like I said, I wanted to make sure we were having our discussion. I also. While we're preparing for Dr. Clayton to make her phone call, let me shout out week one on Let's Talk Business with SJC. Yeah, we cut, we shortened that SJC. <laughs> That's Cheryl J. Cuso. Kudos to my co host on First Wednesdays. That is Mr. Derek Blue, Brother Blue, CEO yes. of the FAP Group. And he laid out the blueprint, the blueprint for what's happening at 5508. Oh, I hear the phone ringing. That's that may cue. be our caller. Caller, come in. This is Zernona Clayton. In hello, America. hello. For those of you that did not hear, now, Dr. Clayton, we will have the opportunity to show you the actual live video from the show. It's also a part of our Facebook live stream. And even though we can't see you, we do have this beautiful picture that we're going to post of you 
And it's the cover of your book, I've Been Marching All the Time. Welcome to the show. Let's talk business with SJC. How are you, Dr. Clayton? Well, I, I will feel better if you tell me that picture makes me look young. <laughs> oh, sexy. absolutely. If, if I'm looking voluptuous on that picture, oh, I'm you happy. are. Thanks. You okay. are as elegant as elegant you. If I were to look elegance up in the dictionary looking at this picture, it will have your name. How about that? Okay. Ooh. Well, All right. Now, while we while you were here last August and we had the pleasure, DJ CEO Derek Johnson is here. He had the pleasure of meeting you at the, the dinner hosted by Visit Tampa Bay held at the Bob Saunders Library. Uh, uh-huh. A year ago, August, celebrating yes. your 88th birthday. Yes, yes, yes. Well, he yes. just looked at your picture, DJ okay. CEO. Uh, tell her what well, you said. Well, you look like a 35-year-old, you know. Oh, I, love, I love you. I love you. Short, cute, but, and but in a suit. Pic- <laughs> Wait, did you hear what he said, Dr. Short, Clayton? Whether the picture is voluptuous or not, I can tell you, I love you, you already. You love him already? already? Mm-hmm. But did you hear what he said the second what? time? Say what? it again, DJ CEO. Short, cute, and in a suit. Oh! Wow. Short, cute, and and okay. in a suit. Okay, the rest of y'all can hang up now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got a couple of questions. Um, so you were here, and you wowed the city of Tampa, and we were looking at your guest list, and you know how most people will look over a guest list and say, oh, I know that person, I know that person. The individuals that came to support your 88th birthday celebration were world-renowned Civil rights activists, you had mayors, former mayors, entertainment, individuals. We took pictures, Andrew Young. You also had um, Dr. Bobby Jones came over. And then there were a few hundred names that we did not know. And they were your ambassadors. And we understood from you that they travel with you all over the world. Everywhere. 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 How do you I make that you. happen, Dr. Clayton? And Well, you know what? I really think <laughs> this, and it's my opinion because no one has asked me that, but I keep down, I never have rancor. Um, I don't um, endorse and embrace gossip. Ooh, I don't okay. talk one to the other. Never, ever, ever. Beautiful. Each of the persons who are my inner circle of friends know that I'm going to have peace and love wherever I am. Peace and, and try love. to give them excitement. Like we go to a new place, I try to plan things that will be, might be new to them. And so I think, now they didn't ask me that, they didn't <laughs> tell me that, nobody <laughs> volunteered, but that's what I think. Because when you get a group together, you can, you can almost bet oh, somebody's going to fall out or somebody's going to have some conflict or somebody's not going to like this, that, right. or that. Or, and I have very little complaints about where we're doing them. They just, they tell me, now what they do tell me is that every trip is an adventure. Every and so trip. I think once they put that in a category, they want to be sure they don't miss anything. And so if you're fussing and fighting and fuming, you're going to miss something. And uh, I don't endorse much of that. And so I don't encourage it and I don't endorse it and I don't promote it. And so I don't have it. And I just have peace and love all the time. And, and all of us feel the same way when the, when the end comes. Nobody wants to leave and separate. Oh. And I think that's a good thing, you know. Dr. Clayton, we just love you so much. And I can say that during your weekend stay here, and, and it was a busy weekend. It was also the, the funeral for the late, great Queen of Soul, Aretha yes. Franklin, but your yes. guests flew right on into the Tampa Bay area. And for those of us in Tampa, we can Google you. We can learn about you. We can read your book. But if we stroll downtown Tampa on the River Walk, there yes. in oh. your honor is etched a stone. Ooh. Oh, that and that was such a touching moment for me because it's sort of like you're leaving your footprints in the sands mm-hmm. of time. Exactly. And uh, that was very touching uh, for me, and I really do 
appreciate uh, the planners including that and they made us it made all of us feel so good and special Aww. and nothing is better than feeling good and special and uh, that was one of those good moments so i'm happy i had a had a good trip there i had awesome. not been to the city before and um yeah that's not true i realized <laughs> someone reminded me that i had spoken there at a sickle cell breakfast a martin luther king uh breakfast uh several years ago but i guess I guess I am getting old. I had forgotten. <laughs> I had forgotten that. But I didn't forget uh, the people I'd met and the wonderful expression of friendship that was extended to me while I was there. So I'll remember that for a long time. Well, we will remember that with you as well. We are never going to forget that you came, visited with us, and left an indelible impression on our city. We want to talk to you. I have a couple of questions, but I also want Dr. Davis. Oh, our phones are ringing, but we want to make sure that we can take care of our time with you. Let's see who this caller is, Dr. Clayton. Caller, come in. Welcome. You're Uh, on Let's Talk Business with SJC and here with Dr. Davis. Please turn your radio down. Uh, Yes. We have we have Dr. Okay, Zanona please. Clayton on the line as well. Okay. Carla, introduce yourself. Yes, what was the question the doctor said? Oh, we were actually asking her a question, and she was talking about how wonderful her trip to Tampa was. And so we don't want to keep her on hold too long because she's calling us from Atlanta, and so we need to connect back with her if we can. Okay. But what's your oh. question? Perhaps we can ask her. I, I couldn't hear her. Did she ask a question? I couldn't hear it if she did. Oh, we couldn't hear what the caller was asking, but Dr. Clayton, this is your time, and we're here to hear from you. But I do want to give Dr. Davis a chance to ask you a question as well, okay. and then we'll come back and talk about the civil rights movement, and we'll okay. end our conversation with your message to okay. the citizens of Tampa Bay and this world about what we can do to continue okay. marching forward. Dr. Davis. Hi, Dr. Clayton. I am Dr. Shanae Davis, and I own a local health clinic. I'm a nurse practitioner and a Ph.D., and um, I'm just a lover of all things history. So I learned something as I looked up um, your fabulous legacy, and I have to concur, you look absolutely marvelous. And the fact that we can continue to mature, I don't use the O word. You're 28, you're 23, and I'm 28. Every day. Okay. Every day, over and over again. But absolutely. Black does not crack. So you were just saying, and I just love listening to you talk about, you know, how you keep down the rancor and um, you have a tight inner circle and you insist on peace. Um, There are some studies that show that longevity is not, um, well, it's more tied to your circle and human contact than it is to actually what you do um, in your in your health. Not that health doesn't matter because it does a big deal. That's actually why I'm here. But keeping um, your stress down, keeping your circle close and insisting on happiness and well-being in life. You have a, a wonderful history and you're still going. For some seniors that are looking at your path and want to look like you and be like you and appreciate the quality of life that you have. Do you have any recommendations on how to stay connected with, you know, friends and community right. and what to do? Because that's actually a path forward well-being and quality of life. Hey, hey, hey do- do- doctor, before you answer that, uh-huh. l- let me get this caller off the line. Caller. You are holding a line open for us. Would you please hang up? If you don't have a question for Dr. Davis, please hang up and go to InTouchNews.com if you want to listen. Thank you, DJ CEO. Okay. uh, I didn't know. That's okay. That's all right. Just hang up and go to In-TouchNews.com. Thanks. Thank you. All right, Dr. Davis and Dr. Clayton. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. How my, can seniors um, get um, connected and appreciate the same quality of life with some of the tips that you, uh, what tips would you have for, for them? Okay. Well, first, I want to make it clear that I don't have a prescription for how to one lives this life. I don't have the answer as to what makes people happy. I don't have the uh, cure-all for the ill of our society. What I do 
all the time is share with people what I do okay. and how I feel and what I uh, think is important in life. So that if that inspires somebody else, then that's wonderful. But I don't want anybody to think I'm an expert. I'm not an expert on anything, <laughs> except I do know how uh, to do one thing. I learned early that God gave us, each of us, the supreme gift, which was life. Yes. Now, what we can do to repay when people give us a gift, you want to return the favor. Mm. With God, if he gave us life, we ought to accept it and treat it good, treat it well, so that he would be pleased with the fact he gave us that gift. Mm. Awesome. So living a good life, living a clean life, and I'm talking about the, the things that will help make other people share with you and your blessings. For instance, I feel I'm really one of the most blessed persons in the world because I thank the good Lord for what he has given me. Amen. I definitely but I also rec- recognize in our society, everybody is not fortunate enough, and that's what I call the fortunate enough, to have good health, a, a good life in terms of the comforts and the creatures of life. So there are a lot of people in our society right around us who are in need. They're hungry. They're Mm. homeless. They're helpless. And I can tell you this. What I do to make myself feel good, and I feel like maybe the the good Lord has given me some brownie points, (laughs) going in, feeding the hungry, Mm. and clothing the naked. Those are simple things to do. And I can tell you, that every time I do a kind deed for somebody else, I feel like I'm 10 feet tall and I'm mm, only 4 Awesome. Mm, awesome. Well, Dr. Awesome. Clayton. It makes you feel good. It, <laughs> it makes, makes you feel, feel good. It makes you feel good. And Dr. Clayton, you know, even though you said you didn't have um, an answer, what I heard was yes. that you're a light and yes. you bring others to God and to um, a well-being by showing them what's possible and how giving can also give a sense of well-being right. and satisfaction. So you actually did have a prescription. And you do. And you have a prescription coming from the doctor. And from a biblical perspective, you have it scripturally to feed the hungry. And that's what you go out oh. and do. You take oh. care of the helpless and the homeless. That's what I we're all to, charged to do. He's I a beacon. do it all the time. He's and a, a beacon of light. A beacon good. of light. Yeah. Oh, Dr. Clayton, we just love the fact that you are sharing what we're going to call prescription and scripture. (laughs) And God has blessed you. And you have some amazing (laughs) blessings. I, I, you're just off of the Trumpet Awards. Kudos. I watched the entire award ceremony and it was beautiful. The support that you have garnered around the world is phenomenal. Speaking about around the world, I know you tour Africa. You work with the educational system over there with schooling and providing, again, helping the helpless, the homeless, and the hungry. You don't just do that here domestically. You do that abroad as well. Oh, yeah. And let me tell you what I did with the school uh, over in uh, Ghana. Okay. I I didn't realize that uh, they didn't have electricity, so I said I want to be sure uh, that my kids would have fresh water. Yes. And they said, well, we can't give them, you know, like fount- water fountains because we don't have electricity. You have to have electricity. Do I said, really? I said, well, I don't know where you where you get electricity from, but let's find some. <laughs> <Let's> find some. <laughs> See, that's what makes but you so special. Not, the school was in a village where they had no education, mm. no electricity. And this one little girl who came to uh, school the first day we opened, she said, oh, she was just ready to shout. She was so happy, she said, because she's always wanted to read. Mm. But because they didn't have electricity, she'd have to go outside and read when the sun is up. When the sun goes down, she's finished. And if it rains, she could not read. She could not read. She said, but now I've got a building I can go in. I can read. It was such a joy. With electricity. But guess what? Guess what? I kept on insisting. Kept on insisting. (laughs) You got to find electricity. We got to find it. Well, they found it. Awesome. And not only did my school have the privilege of having water, but 2,200 people in the village 
now have electricity. Awesome, awesome, awesome. awesome. Oh, I was just thrilled and delighted when they called and told me now over 2,000 people now have electricity because of what I had done. So it makes you feel each Better one good, reach you know. one, and that just gives a brand oh, new... Oh, kudos to you. Yeah. We're, we're giving you a hand clap uh, over the, the, the radio, and this show is going to air, and I'll be sure to get with your assistant so that you can have it replayed back to you. While you Thanks. were talking about your school, we have um, on our campus, the next time you come to Florida, Tampa specifically, you'll definitely have to make a trip over here to our little Black Wall Street, right, right. the 5508 collaborative cooperative campus and we have a shop her name is the owner's name is angie and the shop is accent styles boutique she took a trip at the age of 19 to kenya fell in love with it and decided that i wanted to bring a piece she wanted to bring a piece of the motherland back to her family to her friends and she began to learn the culture and she adopted the messiah tribe and there's this plant and i think it's called a sissa plant kind of looks like a, a short florida palm tree and they take that plant they take the leaves and they beat it down and dr clayton when you get to see the picture we have and they convert the fabric into the fibers uh, into fibers mm-hmm. and they make a purse Oh, and we that. have the purse. We were in her shop yesterday because we wanted you to have one of the purses as well. And I just happen oh. to know that you love black, white, and yellow. So it may end up being um, a black and white animal print made from the Messiah Messiah plant in Kenya. Oh, well, God. actually, it's from the Messiah tribe. Is it unique to Kenya only? Um, I believe so, because uh-huh. those are the individuals who are making it, but it may be distributed all throughout. But we're going to make sure that a copy of one of the purses is sent to oh. you. It's a oh, clutch. And we're giving it away today. One of our collaborators out here at 5508, Carl Ricky Ask Ricky, wanted to be the sponsor for the purse. So not a, when you're on our show, whether we're in the studio or show on the go, we have individuals that just want to be a blessing, that support black businesses, and that's what this is all about. So we will oh. make sure that one of the purses will be shipped to you. Oh, and I'll tell everybody about it. I'll <laughs> I know you that. will. <laughs> but listen, as we were and going through about everything <laughs> about it, well, we'll make sure to, to get one that we know that you will love. Now, that oh, being thanks. said, because I know you have another meeting that you have to go to, but yes. having been an integral part of the civil rights movement, rights beside Dr. King, you, you've got the book. Where can we find, where can others find your book? Is it is it on Amazon or but, can no, we go? Uh, yeah, Amazon, I understand. People can get it, but okay. you know, they're all sold out as far as I know. But Oh, I know. it's time for a reprint. Uh-huh, they, they can get it on Amazon. But I'm trying to find now the man who published the book. Okay. Uh, he, he retired. But I'm going to locate him. I started searching for him yesterday. Well, you know what? You've got two publishers here. You've got DJ CEO yeah, and you've got Kuso. We'll be glad to get it published for you um, okay. in, in any format that you need. Whoa! I'm still okay. learning. And, and, and I'd like to consider that. What I have to do first is um, find him and see that he would not object. You have to get okay. permission. Okay, right, that. right, right. Uh-huh. So, but uh, he's retired. I uh, used to know how I could reach him, but I, I'm looking for him now. Okay, uh, well, after so the show, we will get his name, and you have given the Tampa folk here an assignment, and we've got some things coming down the, the pipeline, and so you'll have to let us know the next time you're going to be in the Tampa Bay area. But back oh. to the involvement with the civil rights movement. We, we've come a long way, but what would you say... From then to now, how have we progressed, Dr. Clayton, Well, in the movement? The, the first thing I'll tell you what everybody can do All is right. vote. Oh, vote, yes. vote, 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 vote. Um, when people talk about their, their voices don't count, their votes don't count, that's um, a person who has very, very limited mm. knowledge and education and inspiration. Okay. But if you have a weakness about voting... Go pull up some footage on uh, some of the men and women who tried years ago, and I know most of them, 
who tried to get into the courthouses of Alabama oh, my and goodness. Mississippi to get African Americans registered, registered. To vote. not to vote yet, just to get registered and then vote. And they were beaten severely, and I had to take one of them to the hospital and the blood running down their oh, faces where okay. they had been beaten severely by law enforcement people who said, you're not coming in here. If you ever mm. had knowledge of the fact that people have suffered, been beaten, and some have died trying to get us the right to vote. Now, how in the world can you stay oh. in bed on voting day? How can you not exercise that right? And black Americans, we've been guaranteed by the Constitution, you know, equity and justice. That's what they said. But, they but said unless we keep making it a reality, we'll never, we'll never get it. We are moving in some right directions, but not fast enough and not thoroughly enough. Okay. And I cannot tell people often enough, please, 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 if you don't get out and vote, you are responsible for some of those people's deaths. Oh, Because Dr. they Clayton. died for you and me and all of us who look alike. There was death and blood and suffering for people to get the right to vote. So I was uh, on the end where... Work with Dr. King, we were able to get the Voting Rights Act, um, you know, the bill passed. Right, get the bill passed. Which means now, it, you know, you can do it. That was a time when you could stay in bed all day because you didn't have no place to go mm. because you couldn't vote. Now you can get up and you can go out and you can vote and your vote does count. I can't preach that enough. Oh, you're, you're preaching now. You are yes. preaching now. And, and yes. we want to take this opportunity to say thank you. We are just coming off of the cusp of a mayoral um, election here. And one of the pundits stated how low our voter turnout was. And to hear you tell us about what you experienced. When I first interviewed you last year, one of the things you said, and I'll never forget this, how afraid you were every day you walked out that door. Could have been your last day. Mm -hmm. Could have been your last day. And you're here telling us via the internet on a phone call that people died, that you carried a person dripping with blood to the hospital mm -hmm. and yes. we can't go vote? Yes, yes, yes. It's, it, 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 it means that we're not... Of treating I'll God right down. either, because he, as I said earlier, he gave us life. And so he put into us the breath of life. He put into us some brains, and hopefully we'd use it, mm. and some heart so that we will have concern for our fellow human being. That's what God did for us. The That's least we did. can do is make it active. Make your, your, your blood run warm mm. in your veins and help yes. somebody else to do the same. Help your heart beat not only in your heart, but in the hearts of those who are suffering. See, we take our lives and give it meaning to somebody else's life and so on and so on. And that's how we're going to have the better world. We've got to care about each other. We've got to see that people who are suffering need to suffer less if we can help them. If we can help somebody along the way, then our lives will never be in vain. In vain. You know, I um, she, I mean, just couldn't have said it, you know, better. Um, I also think that it's so unfortunate that we are not motivated to go vote. And um, Dr. Clayton, I think you hit on something, you know, huge. That inspiration part, um, how could, how can our history as it is not be enough to inspire more um, people to just rush out to the polls? Um, you're standing on people's backs and legacies Absolutely. And, and the blood of your ancestors, um, essentially. How can we just not be more proactive to um, keep our legacy alive when we are looking at, you know, loss of essentially rights and privileges and health care and things like that, that as, as we have um, or experience the consequences of people not going out to vote? Yeah, and let me, and let me just add this. Please. We want, we want to say that you go to the store, when you get ready to get something, you got to buy it and pay for it. Mm. Yes. You go uh, to the polls, you don't have to pay for it. Someone's already paid Ooh, for it. Yes. Great point. The blood helped to pay for your right to vote. So you don't have to do anything except get up and go. Get up and go. Mm -hmm. And that vote becomes their voice. Or someone paid for you, they're now dead. 
we do have to do more to make these young people and uninformed people want the product, though, want the rights, want the privilege of health care, want more um, safety in our communities, want tax dollars to be um, we, we assigned to our uh, computers. We want equity and justice, justice but and equity. if we don't have uh, and, good and representation remember, as a result of voting, go ahead, Dr. Clay, that's a cost. Yeah, yeah, let's interrupt on this one point because I think this is important to say. Yes, ma'am. You know, we as a people never, ever demanded special treatment. We have just wanted equal treatment. Equal treatment. Equal treatment. Equal just treat treatment. us fairly. And that's what we're fighting for now, equity and justice. And that's all we want. And the least we can do is put people in an office who will help us because our country is run by laws. And you do and that with your who vote. enact the laws. So we want to be sure we get the right people in there to help assure us that what we've already been granted will be given. And maintain. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. You have just shared. We could not have planned this script the way it has happened today. And we say thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time. And I know your your day is extremely yeah, busy. I, your I, life I, is extremely I'm, busy. So thank my, you. Thank you. Me, my pleasure. And yes. say hello to everybody. And that handsome man is I will I <laughs> will be back in touch with you. All right. God bless you. We love you. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. What an inspiration. I know, living history. Living 88 history. years young. We're going to take a commercial break and we will be right back to recap and begin something new and fresh. In Touch Radio, where you can listen to a cruising flow of smooth soul and jazz. Today's R&B, a fun touch of hip-hop and gospel. All my music on one station. Giving you a buffet of music, news, and entertainment. We're In Touch Radio. So believe we hunted down 813 248 6300. Everything gon' be okay, Carl Ricky. He coming, he taking care of state of Florida. Grab a pen of sun down 184 361 Rick. That's 184 361 425. Never word from the point four, just recline. Just ask Ricky, push your boy statewide. Just in case you missed it, I'ma tell you one more time 184 361 Rick. Call Ricky, ask Ricky, the legal medical referral service. The doctors and lawyers are not network or trained in handling auto injury claims and giving you the best medical treatment and recovery. Dial 1 361 Rick. That's 1 361 7425. Ricky, 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 Ricky. Ask Ricky, Ricky. Been in a car crash? Call Ricky. Don't know what to do? Ask Ricky. We will connect you with a lawyer and doctor experience in auto accident injuries. Call Ricky at 844-361-7425. After an auto accident, you have 14 days to seek medical attention. You may be in pain. So call Ricky, ask Ricky for your best options. 844-361-7425. Call Ricky, ask Ricky is a legal and medical referral service. The lawyers in our network pay to receive referrals. All right, as the music begins to play, we're back. Let's talk business with SJC. Co-host today, Dr. Shanae Davis. And woohoo! To you, our listeners, we are so sorry you were not able to uh, chime in on Facebook Live with us. Facebook is actually down, and you'll hear this on In Touch News Live about an hour or so after the show airs. We're going to post a link. We have to post this we, link. We will. We will because Dr. Clayton preached. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. With her segment. Yes, she did. Extended the segment and it will be important for us to listen to what she had to say. First about her blessings and, and I, I would call them the three H's. And, and that's kind of how she, she described it to us. We are to take what God has given to us, how God has blessed us. And we are to help the homeless, mm -hmm. help the helpless, and help the hungry. And help the hungry. I love that. Now, that's what she does. That's what she does with her school, which was built in Africa. In Ghana. Um, yeah, Ghana, named after her. And she goes there to visit to make sure. So little girl walks up to you and says, I can't read. 
We don't have lights. And she asked the question, why not? We should ask these questions, simple questions. Why are our children suffering? Why are our children not doing what they should be doing or given the opportunity to do what they're doing? More often than not, our people suffer for lack of knowledge. And without a vision. Without a vision. And she, and part of what she um, preached, she talked about the blood of Jesus, yes, of she course. Did. But she also talked about the blood of our ancestors yes. that we um, sort of take for granted by not going out and being proactive with our vote. Um, and that's what we spoke on. But I yes. want to talk about how we may not be as proactive as we need to with our health. Okay. So well, you're getting ready to turn it up a notch. One of the things about the show, Let's Talk Business with SJC co-host Dr. Shanae Davis, is to always bring to you the who, what, when, where, and why of the subject matter that we are talking about. So we have an expert in the house today. We need you to listen carefully to what it is that she's going to say. At the beginning of the show, we talked to you about National Women's History Month. We had on one of the greatest living legends in history, Dr. Zanona Clayton Brady. She told us about her life. That's wisdom. She imparted some knowledge upon us as well. What we're going to talk about in part two is all up to Dr. Davis. She brought awareness to us about Colon Cancer Awareness Month and Nutrition, Nutrition yes. Awareness Month. And because what she has to say is so important, we will not have an interruption until we learn what she has to say about colon cancer. She's going to talk to you about all aspects of it. Wonderful. And thank you. So, yes. You are welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so, March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month and also Nutrition Awareness Month. We thought it would be so awesome to just pair that and talk about both of those together because nutrition is actually a means of prevention of colon cancer. Now, colorectal cancer is the third most common cancer amongst men and women. But if men, we look at their cancer risk and women, you look at their cancer risk, that's where it comes to number three. When we look at men and women together, when we say people, we're actually looking at it as um, the second most common cause of a cancer death. And colon cancer is generally, you know, pretty preventable. And who's at risk for that? Well, we used to screen for colon cancer at 50, but we now know that more people are at risk. It could be because we're looking for uh, cancers more. We understand cancers more as time goes on. Um, it could be just for that we're living differently. But the recommendation is now that screening starts at age 45 because we're finding more incidents Four. of colon um, um, cancers and things that can lead to colon cancer in younger people, in younger um, adults. Um, what kind of symptoms are there for colon cancer? You generally don't know it at all. Um, certainly you need to pay attention to, you know, what goes in and, and what goes out, but that's right. a part of the whole prevention and early detection um, process in itself. Just, just take a look at things. So um, colon cancer is when there are cells in the colon that um, grow and they kind of take on a life of their own. And that's in part because of things that we do to our bodies. Um, for example, if we smoke or we expose ourselves to um, carcinogens, they can cause our own cells to kind of switch up and mutate a little bit. Okay. Um, and that's what essentially um, a cancer cell is. It starts as our own cell and it changes the way it grows and divides and just becomes something different. And it feeds off of things that's supposed to be feeding your natural body. It actually acts as a parasite and starts to feed this new abnormal body. And, um, and then it just eats you up. So when it happens in the colon, that's where we get, um, that's colon cancer. But I, when you talk about colon, and uh, I have a relative that um, experienced that, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, 17 years, cancer-free. I remember I went to see him at the hospital and his physician said, actually the surgeon said, the colon, if you had to have a perfect place mm -hmm. for that tumor to rest, yes, yes, it was, and you're talking about colon, but we've got 
many feet of a colon. A bunch of feet. Yeah, over, over 30 feet of colon. So when we talk about colon cancer, I first wanted to ask you, what part of the colon are mm. we pretty much talking about? Thank you so much. Um, I want to break this down just to, you, you know, I like to just get make oh, it real girl, simple. I'm, girl, I'm here. For the most part, if you think about it, um, we got one tool that's connected, that connects us from one end to the other. It started at the mouth. And, right. the, and the other end is, that's the end of the tube. Um, we <laughs> Right. So that system is called the gastrointestinal system, um, essentially. You get the mouth and then the esophagus, which is the tube that connects the back of your throat to the top of your stomach. And then there's the stomach where foods are churned up and started to be broken down. The acid in the stomach helps with that process. And then you're, it's, um, the macronutrients, the proteins, yes. carbs, and fats are broken down. And then they go into the first part of the small intestine, which small is intestine. a Long, long, long. That's the 30 feet that you're talking about. Um, that's yes. the small intestines. The first part is called the duodenum, and then you get to the jejunum. Right. And in there, you get some extra enzyme activity that helps to break down the carbohydrates, the proteins, and the fats. And once those nutrients are um, broken down, the um, villi or the cells in the small intestines, their role is to take out the nutrients and the um, atoms and the electrolytes and Oh, it's absorbed stuff. it's absorbed into the blood it's absorbed into the blood and that's how blood is responsible for uh, pushing around um, nourishment um, that you get from your food but what's left the waste mm. it continues on through the 30 feet um, you know the longer it goes the more stuff is absorbed from it and once it finishes through the small intestine it connects to a larger yes. um, tube the large intestine and it, for the most part we have about five feet of large intestine but again all the stuff um, that we need for digestion and enzymatic activity it's supposed to be kind of gone by mm. the time it gets to the large intestines but it's still liquidy so it starts pretty much if you think about the right um, side of your body at the bottom okay that's where the small intestine and, um, ends. ends right and down there is um, the cecum which is the First part of the We're large tracing. intestine, We're right here which, with her, and that and there's like a little bit of tag or something um, yes. down there. It's a it's a useless bit of an organ, you know. Probably when we used to be closer to dinosaurs, but um, that's the appendix. And um, periodically, if your diet is um, not the best, or we eat a lot of processed things, sometimes um, residual from our diet gets down in there and it can get inflamed, and that's appendix problems. But it's generally in the bottom right. But what food is supposed to do, the residual is supposed to do, is keep going keep up. Keep moving up. So it gets from the, goes from the bottom right to the top right, and that's right under your liver. And the longer this process goes on, remember, it's feet. losing water. But we got five feet to go. Then it goes from across, across yep. our bodies, from Ross. the right side to the left side. Then it goes back a little bit, and then down. Comes back down. It goes back down. And on the bottom left side, it actually ends up directing towards the back side of our body and that's that's the um behind essentially yeah, well that's so, what the doctor said right so transverse across mm -hmm. that across part right. descending down, colon descending. the come down part but then you get the part that curves back and that's a sigmoid, sigmoid. colon and then the bottom part is like the rectum and then the anus okay and that's the that's the exit and that's the exit so now we've gone through the anatomy of the colon. Remember, the longer stuff is in the um, intestine, the more dehydrated it gets, the harder um, it gets. Um, so if we have a nice fiber-rich diet, we got nice bulk and all the good stuff goes out and we have... Um, Think about a broom that's just kind of sweeping things right. by as all it goes by. Right. But what if you got a bunch of fat and mm. crackers and just... Uh, if your your diet your diet content. your your diet isn't as healthy as it ought to be, or if you have um, things that are um, less than organic that have a lot of added chemicals that cause inflammation on the um, inside, sometimes things kind of get stuck along the sides or kind of stuck in pockets along the way. And anything that starts organic, it's still organic inside of your body, and the cells from it. You know, plants are living, you know, animals or I'm sorry, living organisms and they have a, you know, DNA structure and things that affect its DNA. Once you're exposed to it, it can affect your DNA. 
And so being constantly exposed to these things is what puts you at higher risk for cells to mutate and things to develop. Usually, as I indicated, colon cancer doesn't have many symptoms, but what you may find on an exam or screen is that your provider tells you that you have some polyps. Now, polyps, um, just for um, ease and understanding, just think about it as like little moles on the inside of the lower colon, okay? Um, The lower colon, because that's where things kind of stay the longest, um, there's less fluid in it, so it is the heaviest. Um, You know, the closer to the beginning, the more water is in it, the longer it stays in there, the the drier, you know, it is. So it just kind of stays next to the wall of your of your gut there, exposing your cells to whatever you you, you ate, um, essentially. So a polyp um, can grow from that process, a little mole, um, which usually are not cancerous. Screening, that should start at about 45. That's the new guideline by the American Cancer Society. means that if there are abnormal cells or there's bleeding noted or something other than what's normal, we need to take a look at it because we don't have x-ray vision. Okay, So if that little mole in there is um, cancerous, the only way we know is that we take it out. And it's no reason to keep polyps inside of the colon. So um, polyps are recommended to be um, taken out. So those those we want to remove. Well, what the surgeon was saying was mm-hmm. at the base of his sigmoid, mm-hmm. the sigmoid colon, which is, we have this little diagram, y'all, in front of us. And DJ CEO lifted it up to you a little earlier, yeah. right at the, at the rectum. And he mm-hmm. said we were able to just go in, snatch that cancerous tumor out, as you're talking about colon cancer now, the majority reside right here. And I'm saying right here because you all can't see it, but we're talking right. about the mm-hmm. sigmoid colon. The reason that I went through that anatomy is because, um, again, you get ascending, going up, transverse, mm-hmm. going across, Cross. and then going down. Sigmoid is the part that goes to the back, and then you got the rectum and anus. So the drier it is, it sits right there. And when stuff is sitting... You know, it's next to the lining. There's exposure, and I guess uh, that's our cue that we're going to hear the music coming on, on. And so we're going to hear from the sponsors that allow us to be able to conduct this show. We're we'll see you back in a in few. The, we're going to stay in the Sigmoid. We'll come back in the Sigmoid. <laughs> Smooth Soul. Rocking your radio on the sounds of soul. Playing your favorite R&B in touch radio. Been in a car crash? Call Ricky. Don't know what to do? Ask Ricky. We will connect you with a lawyer and doctor experience in auto accident injuries. Call Ricky at 844-361-7425. After an auto accident, you have 14 days to seek medical attention. You may be in pain. So call Ricky. Ask Ricky for your best options. 844-361-7425. 7425. Call Ricky. Ask Ricky is a legal and medical referral service. The lawyers in our network pay to receive referrals. Call Ricky, 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 Ricky. Ask Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. You need medical or a lawyer. I got the man to do the leg work for you. We tried the other ones before, so believe we hunted down. 813-248-6300. Everything gonna be okay. Call Ricky, he coming. He takes Instead of Florida, grab a pen of sun down. 1 8 4 3 6 1 Rick. That's 1 8 4 3 6 7 1 4 2 5. Never word from the point forward, just recline. Just ask Ricky, push your boy stay by. Just in case you missed it, I'ma tell you one more time. 1 8 4 3 6 1 Rick. Call Ricky, ask Ricky, is a legal medical referral service. The doctors and lawyers in our network are trained in handling auto injury claims and giving you the best medical treatment and recovery. Dial 1 8 4 4 Three six one Rick. That's one eight four four three six one seven four two five. Oh, Ricky, 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 Ricky. Ask Ricky, Ricky. We're back. We're back. Let's talk business with SJC. You're here today with my co-host, Dr. Shanae Davis. And again, you will be able to see the live show on In Touch News shortly after the program. We wanted to 
jump right back into her conversation about colon cancer. She talked to us about your large intestines. She talked to us about ascending, transverse, and descending part of the colon. And she ended the conversation with the Sigmore colon. And so we're going to turn the, the microphone back over to her yes. so that she can talk. Yes. So, about your health business. So we got stuck in the Sigma. We got and stuck. the reason I wanted to get stuck right there is because that's that curvy part. And the way we screen for colon cancer is really looking at that part that um, stool sits in the longest. Yes. The last part. And it's the driest. So you're at risk because that's you're where you risk. get the most um, contact. There are three main ways that we screen for colon cancer. Um, one, it can be done um, by yourself at home. You may have seen some of the commercials on TV yes. um, where you just kind of go and then you um, send a specimen in. Um, that's that's an easy way. That would have to be done every year where you kind of go to the bathroom. They'll give you like a brush or um, something to get a part of the specimen and then you send it off to the lab. They can examine that. But if any abnormalities are found, you're going to need to go get um, a colonoscopy, colonoscopy to confirm because they can't see. Um, now, a sigmoidoscopy is l sort of like a colonoscopy, but you're not as sleepy during the procedure, and it doesn't go look as far, and the preparation doesn't have to be as intense. intense. Um, however, I've seen this done one time, and it's generally done in a provider's office, and the uh, camera is... Um, if you think about sort of like a a, a one a one sided binocular or a mm -hmm. or a monocular, um, like a like you just put it up to your eye and then they go into your behind just like that. Um, I thought it was a little too close. Um, it was a little uncomfortable for the um, the patient and. Um, that's just an option that's available for you. Sigmoidoscopies are about every five years and they're much harder to do. Um, a colonoscopy is the most common way. Um, a lot of people are, you know, they have issues with it, but um, it's so easy. You, you know, take a sedative, you um, go to sleep and you wake up and it's done. Yeah, things have changed right. from but five you, years but ago. But, you know, there is a preparation period. And they used to do something called Go Lightly where you drink this gallon of, right. of, of stuff right. and everybody hated that. At 45. Um, but, you know, there are so many other ways to clean out your colon now. You know, so there are much less intense. So you can talk to your health care provider um, about that or go online and, it's just easier, Why much easier, and you don't, and you don't, and you don't have to do, and you don't have to do that. I'm trying to um, <laughs> be mindful of the time that we that we have. So you you you, you wash your colon out, um, you go to sleep. The doctor puts a camera um, inside, and they take a look at a nice clean colon. Um, patients ask, "How clean do I have to be?" I like to say, "Chitlin clean." Chitlin clean. I, I like to say chitlin clean because they want you want you're gonna want your health. It all. You want to want the healthcare to, provider to be able to see the entire lining of the colons. And at that point, if there's a polyp or something abnormal there, they can actually pinch that right off right while off. they're in and send it away and to and to see what's going on. So um, then you wake up, you go home, you got a day off work, bada boom, bada bing. So um, if no abnormalities are found, that's usually every 10 years, um, a colonoscopy. So who should have um, um, a screen? Certainly, if you have a family history of colon cancer, you should be um, screened. If you're over 45, you should be screened. If you're minority, minorities across the board um, are at greater risk for experiencing um, colon cancers just because um, oh, so of, of, of ethnic diets and different exposures and um um, sometimes it's, you know, socioeconomic limitations. Um, um, you can't get organic things and, and, you know, eat as clean. So um, minorities are at higher risk. If you smoke, um, it's a risk mm. factor, overweight or obese. Remember, um, on another show, I told you that, you know, fat cells aren't just inert, you know, storage containers. They actually um, release a lot of hormones and, and things like that. So that does uh, increase your risk. Be physically active because if you're not active, that's a risk factor in itself. If you drink a whole bunch of alcohol, particularly in um, men, that's a risk factor. Red meats, bacon. Mm cured meats, things that are smoked, um, all of those have carcinogens and nitrates in it. And those are um, things that can make, you know, mutations happen in those um, cells. And if you got a history of inflammatory bowel disease, those things also um, put you at risk. So how do you um, reduce your risk? 
Don't do those things. Be those active. Things. Right. Be active. Don't smoke. Um, try to lose um, weight and try to eat a diet that's higher in produce. Having five to nine servings of produce. These are things that grow um, fruits and vegetables as uh, with as few pesticides and hormones um, as possible. Um, organic, you know, if you, you, if can. you can or, or if, if you can't do organic, just wash that stuff off real good. <laughs> you know, but Look. putting those things in your diet it, um, helps you to um, expose your, your, your colon and your cells to those phytonutrients or those plant uh, nutrients that can help to protect your cells um, even. One of the things I like to say, um, because I, I like to dabble in nutrition, five is fine, but nine is divine. Nine you have to figure out how divine. to get nine from your fruits and your vegetables <laughs> right, and make right, sure that right. you get the, the green leafy vegetables in. Because when I was on Mayo Clinic doing some research, mm. when you see your when you see African American, that was the third risk yeah, they yeah, list. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's us. Absolutely, it's real. Minorities are at greater risk for all um, chronic diseases. But you know, sometimes we don't want to do prescriptions. You know, nowadays, and everybody's doing a bunch of supplements and doing health food stores or looking stuff up. But uncle told me this. Uncle told me this. So I'm going to take something that's not a prescription. So mm. I also want to throw in these um, supplements because supplements do have value. Now, not just any supplement. You need the to right make sure that you talk to your healthcare provider about what grade of supplement. But these in, in particular, green tea, lots of phytonutrients and plant um, um, benefits on there. Vitamin okay. C and vitamin D are um, in that antioxidant um, category. Um, Omega-3s, um, CoQ10, and curcumin. Curcumin is that ingredient in turmeric. Um, yes. Yeah, good seeds, but, good yeah spice. but you do need to take it with a fat source, um, generally like a, a coconut oil or um, in a dish that can coconut milk in a dish okay. that contains that kind of good fat avocado oil, um, because otherwise it just kind of goes straight through you and you don't get the benefit. of That's it. a good point. Yeah, but omega three is an anti inflammatory So you get those benefits there and CoQ10 works in the mitochondria that's that energy working component um, of the cell so um, to fire up and to, to fire you up and to give you more energies and to make those body processes um, work a bit more efficiently those are things you want those are things you want. Those are things you want. Well, listen, it's National Women's History Month. We had Dr. Clayton on the show. She fired us up in talking about the blood, but she talked about what we need to do and recognize the importance of our voice and our vote. Community, radio, listeners, Facebook, watchers, vote, vote. That is your voice. Fired up was also Dr. Shawnee Davis, your best you. Yes. You want to talk to her a little more in detail about the colon, about colon cancer, about being stuck in the sigmoid colon. How do we find you? About being screened and preventing all of this. I'm at 15511 North Florida Avenue, Suite 502 with a beautiful lotus on the front <laughs> window. Um, you can call us also at 813 936 Two six zero nine, and you can reach us online at yourbestyouclinic.com or ybyclinic.com. Yby, but well, we want to say thank you thank for you. sharing such important information with us. As the music comes, we just want to let you know that five five zero eight hitting figures. We will post all of the announcements on our website, and as well, most of them will probably be on In Touch News. Thank you, DJ CEO. Thank you to our listeners. Thank yes. you again. Let's talk business with Cheryl J. Cousseau. See you next week. Thank you, Cheryl. I Thank love you. Thank you. Love you. Hey, this is Tampa Bay Tammy. Don't forget to pick up your copy of In Touch News. <laughs>